find Zarina. Mel! Are you reading your book standing up like a... So me and Zarina are in Ireland at the moment. We're in Cove, which is at the very, very, very bottom in Cork. We are here in Sirius Art Centre, like literally in the basement of Sirius Art Centre, which is a beautiful building on the coast. Uh, and it's set in what I believe is an old yacht club. Um, we got a very, very nice message. Um, maybe around like, July this year, July, August, um, from Miguel Amado, who we've known for years. I, I mean, me and Zarina have been writing about art now for almost, I mean, just over seven years. But we've never been on like a full on official, dedicated incubator kind of residency. And this is the first one. We've applied for residencies in the past and we've not got them. <laughs> Um, and this one came about in like a completely different way. So Miguel got in touch with us and said, is there anything you're working on? Is there any way that I can support what you're doing? Which is like the nicest thing anyone could say to a creative. And we uh, just so happened to get that email when we were like sorting out our book deal. And we were already panicking about like how and when and where we were gonna write the book. Um, me and Zarina are like living in two completely different cities. I'm in Liverpool, she's in London. And because of my illness, like it's really hard for me to just go like up and down, up and down, or, you know, to host her if she comes up a lot to write. And I think we've realized like we do our best work when we're in the same room so that we can like, I don't know, enjoy the serendipity of of like those odd in-between conversations and in-between moments when you're like working but you're living together. And this is so important to us and like we want to get it right and we like the idea and the book itself and it's just like, it's all so exciting but fuck like, how do you do it justice? How do you like write something that you're really proud of when you're just not in the same place? So we said that to Miguel all that time ago and he invites us here. So we're here for 16 days, um, which is a little bit crazy. Uh, we're on our second day here and we've got so much work done. So I'm feeling like really good and um, just like optimistic. <laughs> I was a bit of a nervous wreck before we came uh, because we went behind on the book writing, but it's really hard to like see what you've made in the noise of like real life it's just hard to have perspective and then already two days into this residency where we're in an apartment and like we've vlogged off of emails and social media and we're just writing like this message is like my only message to the outside world i already can see the work better i can see it from more angles and i can I don't know, I appreciate it and I'm having new ideas. Like it's all working, like all of the things that I wanted out of a residency are already happening. I'm getting so out of breath from talking. Um, I'm, about, I'm about to come up on my like two year long COVID anniversary. Fucking hell, I've been sick for so long. Uh, in terms of sickness and like getting here and trying to manage my own expectations. Like I want to do so much work. But at the same time, I have chronic fatigue and chronic pain and all this bullshit. Uh, what I've done both days is like wake up slow, um, just watch some YouTube, uh, be careful, don't run into things, like just write when I feel like I can write. Um, I did buy the new Pokemon game and I'm gonna play that, so it'll be fine. What? <laughs> I was filming it. <laughs> <laughs> just, oh, it just really quickly turned into sexy texting. Oh no! <laughs> she said yes, Daddy. <gasps> <gasps> this I'm playing a child's game. Leave me alone. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> this is 
but you know when you're just before it and you're like <sighs> have you got not the fear but like the, the adrenaline of that i've got the adrenaline but i'm like you know when there's just so much to hold and you're like fuck, yeah fuck, fuck. and you were saying things before and i've already forgot them wait what were we saying about this i don't know i forgot <laughs> Really Don't you remember Chris Jenner in that Kardashians episode when she comes in with the scribe? <laughs> oh wow, you look okay. beautiful. Are you being serious? Serena's gone to sleep, so I'll just be a bit quiet. But I've just been sat here thinking how we've been here for like Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. In that time, we have watched one episode of TV. And it was the first episode of Wednesday and it took us two days to watch it because we were like no we need to get back to work <laughs> like I didn't expect how sucked in to work I would be able to get the promise and magic that people have always spoken about in terms of residencies like I know what they were talking about and it feels like the biggest privilege like something I don't even want to say because of how good it has felt and how productive it has been. <sighs> and in a way that feels like a bad thing because it's not going to last forever and not everyone can have it. Oh my God. It's like we stumbled upon a meeting of like the village elders. <laughs> Are they Freemasons? Oh, someone else is out for a nighttime walk. I don't know if you can hear me because the water is so loud, but I'm on a night walk. Uh, I'm listening to a podcast about jackalopes and yeah, I'm trying to like do a big walk because I need to get back and start one of the chapters, but I really need like a fresh brain and going on a walk and listening to a podcast about like something completely unrelated really helps me. It's like a palate cleanser. Um, and then I find that like, I'm not even listening to what the podcast is about. I am actually just thinking about the chapter and having ideas and then like having to get me thrown out and make notes, check behind me to see that there's no murderers and then carry on. But I, do, I just moved the camera so that I, I could see in the reflection if there was any murderers coming. I'm fine. I'm safe. This cold sore. Very chic very YouTube appropriate, very influencer of me. woke up about three o'clock yesterday. Um, I'm very tired. I got woke up early because of noises. <laughs> I forgot to bring earplugs with me. Um, the noises were above me. I forgot that we are staying in an apartment that's underneath a gallery. And today the exhibition's back on and it woke me up. And then I just couldn't get back to sleep because I could hear people walking to see the exhibition. Man, I'm just gonna lie on the couch for the foreseeable future. That I don't know if you can hear it. Like the things happening when I can't speak properly because I'm tired. Like not properly. I mean, I can properly, but just like little slips, little slips. Oh, I just stopped filming, um, and then I remembered that. I should explain what I'm wearing. <laughs> uh, I'll step back so you can see the full effect. 
it's an UD. This apartment has no central heating. And so we, I got scared. I've been sleeping in it. I asked the White Pube Discord whether I should vacuum pack it and bring it in my suitcase. And everyone said yes. So it was a good decision. I'm really, it's cold that night. <laughs> the light. I said. Shall I re enter? Hold on, Tate. <laughs> no, wait, because I need to be in the right place because the light's so like harsh. I'm going to put my things back in my pocket. No, you need to. <laughs> <laughs> Why have you gone mad? I've gone mad. Well, as I was coming back in, Megan was there at the door. She was like, oh, hello, you're right, it's me. And I just went, we've gone mad, but we've done so much. And she was like, I didn't ask. She's like, I just wanted to know if you needed anything. And I was like, no, we're fine. We've checked loads of things off the list. Loads of things. <laughs> And then my music, I'd taken one of my AirPods out and all of a sudden Daddy Yankee just starts playing again and I'm like, I went like this. <laughs> She's like, genuinely like in fear for me. You're not coping well with being in a basement in, in a remote location. It's just, do you know what, if I don't, if I don't see a pigeon the next 12 hours I might start mentally disintegrating again. I saw at least two, so we're good. Touch and go till mm. the next one. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. We'll go to a cafe today. We'll we'll do our work out in public. We'll see the sun. <laughs> <laughs> We went to a cafe, we finally left the apartment, and then it uh, closed after 25 minutes. So no way, uh, yeah. Breaking Dawn. Breaking Dawn? Well, we should, we should have that on the table as yes, inspiration. Yes, as inspiration. Enjoy your uh, flag in a cafe. That's nice, hold on, let me zoom in. There is no housing shortage, only the monopoly of property. What's the other side say? The other side says, that is loud. I think about it all the time. <laughs> and I'm too hot to ever wear scarves because of my body. But this goes with your outfit in like a really pleasing way. Hold on. Oh, you look cute. <laughs> I can't do cool vape tricks, no. which I could. You know, there's people that can blow smoke rings and do like the... Wash, 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 wash. And then makes a little... Yeah. Can you CGI it? I'll try. Go on, pretend. Go on. Hold on. Huh? And that'll be flames when Gab's done with it. <laughs> <laughs> what are we going to do today then? I think we're having lunch with Miguel. And then I've got a little list of easy wins to tick off. Two little edits on two little chapters and then... I've got to start writing something that I've already planned out, so it's big cheap. boy. But it's a no, it's a mid boy. Mid boy. Middle boy. Hmm. Not a baby boy. What are you doing today, Gabrielle? What am I doing? I'm doing um, a big chapter rewrite. Uh, I feel like what our process has been mostly for the book is like Zarina first pledges a chapter, and then panics about it, and then I read it. <laughs> I, I do the first go and I go, Gabrielle, this is shit, it's awful, I hate it, I'm a terrible writer. And then Gabrielle takes it and goes, no, and then she she makes it nice. <laughs> it's not bad, it's like, it's just like Zarina in a, in your inner soul, like you want to write like YA. Oh yeah, we like all know 100%. that, yeah. It would be like a completely different book. 
<laughs> when we did the contract, um, there was a whole bit for the death clause, like what would happen if one or the others or both of us died? Like, how would we finish the book? If you if died, I die, if you this died. book is going to be in the young author section. The white, not young author, young, young adult, adult section. That's what it stands for. And there's nothing wrong with that. Hello, Hello Miguel. Live, on the Live entry. How's it going? Let me turn this on. Hello, uh, we've just been for a little lunch with Miguel. Miguel is the director of Serious Art Centre and we know him because literally years ago, um, maybe the White Pube started in 2015 and I reckon in 2016, maybe it was 2017. I don't know, we had, we had this idea where we were like, do you know what, um, people in the art world like they do funded applications they come up with projects they do funded applications they get money and then that's their job um and we were like well maybe what we need to do is come up with a project so that we can do that and then we can have art jobs our idea was like this is something that we're thinking about but this is something that the people around us are thinking about as well like if you want to be an artist or a curator or a ceramicist whatever it is like where's the best place to do that like should you live in liverpool should you live in london manchester newcastle somewhere in between somewhere like totally not known main in a mainstream sense as being a place for art but actually there's there might be a really good community there for the kind of facility or people or just conversation that you need um and it was a question we had and we knew that other people had the question. So we thought, okay, maybe the project we do is we get in touch with like a shitload of arts institutions across the country. And we ask them if we can hold like a coffee morning in their building. And we speak to people in their local arts community. And we ask them those questions. We say like, what is here good for? And then we would collate all that information and we would put it in some form of book. Uh, <laughs> and when we did that, we actually uh, got in touch with Middlesbrough Institute of Modern Art as one of the, the places. Um, we, I mean, we got in touch with everyone and we, we were fucking gutsy because like, we didn't know anyone yet. We didn't know, we didn't know anyone. And they didn't know us, so. We were just trying to be very polite over emails. Yeah, and one of the places that we got in touch with was Middlesbrough Institute of Modern Art. And I, if I remember correctly, their email went straight to like the person on the front desk who had to then like triage it. And um, <laughs> Miguel worked at Mima and he said like, he'll never forget that he got a, you know, a call from front desk saying like, oh, the white cube want to speak to you. And he was like, no, they don't. <laughs> like, why would the white cube? The white cube have nothing to do with me. The white cube, have, you know, we're socialists up here. Why would they want to speak to us? Um, so he called back my number <laughs> to ask what was going on. And then I'm on the phone explaining this coffee morning idea. And he said it took him so long to figure out that it wasn't the white cube. Reread the email that had come through and see White Pube instead and realise that we were taking the piss out of the White Cube uh, gallery and format and all that, all the rest of it. Um, <laughs> and it's really strange and like satisfying to now, what it be like six, seven years later, where we are actually writing a book, we actually have a book deal and Miguel has invited us over to use the apartment in the building that he runs as a residency space to like get the book done. Fucking hell, my arm's hurting. Isn't that mad?
now you can get a size. Yeah, the old yacht club. You get to be a little fancy ghost. A little fancy ghost. That is and you're like, ooh, James Terrell. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> but that, the idea that this would be a gig as a ghost implies the existence of a ghost gig economy. And gig ghost ghosts. And emplo- unemployment. <laughs> <laughs> Ghosts are notoriously, I think, too chaotic to like form organised labour, like groups. Okay, yeah, I take maybe not gig them, but just like vocation. <laughs> <laughs> what? Thirteenth of April, twenty twenty-two. This year, nearly months ago. Cove Supernatural inve- investigators are undertaking a ghost hunt at our building, where there have been reports of paranormal activity. Live stream on Sirius's Facebook page from 9pm Saturday, 16th of April. Tune in to see if they find any, any evidence of paranormal activity on site. That is Sirius Arts, at Sirius Arts, the actual art centre's own. As in, upstairs. <gasps> it's an incredible building in a town that has a strange, quite tragic history, but also a lot to work with. I had heard a few ghost stories about the centre. Who knows what it means to be haunted? She's just questioning it like it unquestionably is. Mm. But it is a 300-year-old building on the site with a vast history without going into too much detail. Go into detail? Without going into too much detail, it is extremely, extremely haunted. Okay, no, okay. Do you know what? I'm not having this. I'm not having this. I am a grown woman. I'm nearly 30. Wait one second. Now listening to Ayatul Kursi a hundred times for spiritual protection. I will not be killed by a ghost in Ireland. Interesting this. Yeah, what's the beautiful uh, background? We made an effort today, so we want to show everyone. This is the first time I've worn makeup since last Thursday, Gab. It's a little bit. We look so cute! <laughs> my, my look how cute we look. I mean, look that way. We're beautiful. <laughs> right, let's go and do our Just panel. Central St. Martin's in London. We were friends. We were like best friends. No. <laughs> it was like that long and it just kind of described what was in the room. Three stars. And I have never been so furious in my life. Don't and Google it. Don't Google it. I, I rewrote it a couple years ago as well because I was like, I can't believe everyone's reading this. It's so shit. When I was writing reviews, it felt unfair that I was talking about problems with the gallery, or like with the structure of the galleries and the way things run. I was talking about that in relation to an artist who had very little control over what was actually going on behind the walls that they were putting their work on. We're done. Uh, We just did the talk and then we mingled with people and then we went round the corner for a lovely dinner with a few artists and writers and academics from the area as well as the staff from the gallery had like a big it was like really like a really cute festive meal with like crackers on the table and stuff like that i just wish really nice because i don't think i'm gonna do something like that when i get home like because we're here for most of the month um my my face is so tired from like making expressions and i don't mean to say that in like a oh like like it wasn't worth it way because it was so nice to chat to people from Ireland <laughs> um, and hear about art stuff and also like people's experience of lockdown and like asking artists to like, can I see your paintings? Can I see your paintings? It's just so fun. I love it. I love that like in doing that, it makes the world feel bigger because 
you know more people in it on more of like a real level because you've just sat and had dinner across from each other for for hours which I guess is like the point of dinners like that um you know it's not like cd networking I mean I'm sure sometimes it is but it's just it's like nice it's like oh I know that person now like if I'm in Cork I can hit them up and come and see their studio two days I was so tired uh, I woke up <sighs> I don't know I had like about six hours sleep and then I came out into the living space and then Zarina woke up and I was like Zarina I feel as bad as you look <laughs> and we both then went back to sleep for about two hours <laughs> I really need to wash my hair look at the state of me oh my god just try and do as much as we can in these past few days, not last few days. <laughs> I'm in, but I'm also gonna go for a walk because I sat for too long and now my legs are fucking killing. Uh, I'm still filming. <laughs> <laughs> my legs hurt so much in that that I had this thought, like a new thought of what, how to describe what the pain feels like. No. Szechuan. No. Szechuan. <laughs> you know when you have like Szechuan peppercorns? Yes. And you get numb, numb, Terrible. numb, but it like hurts, and it's like, oh, this is so uncomfortable. They're all in my leg. Like, <laughs> yeah, I was like, this was like shaking my leg. <laughs> the woman in front was so annoyed. She kept like going like this, looking at me. Really? But my leg was like, ah. Oh. Oh <laughs> so do you know what? It's worth it for the metaphor sometimes. Yeah. Oh. We're writers. I don't know. My Szechuan leg, and it was all on me, like me right leg, all the way down it. So annoyed. <laughs> Printing things out. And it's so weird. <laughs> Feels official. So satisfying to watch it come out. Mm. We wrote every one of those words. But after like we finish the whole thing. <laughs> you know what? We were just saying as well, like by the time we leave here, if everything goes to plan, like everything we've got left on for the rest of today and tomorrow is doable. Yeah. We should have more than half the book written. I think we already have about half. That's it. That's the end. I've got no idea if this footage will ever see the light of day. Uh, I hope it does. I hope there's a way for me to like figure out what I want it to become. Um, I think this has just made me realize my new year's resolution as well. Like just in that literal moment. Like uh, on the White Pube Discord today, we were speaking about, uh, you know, just asking people what they were gonna do. And some people had yeah, things that maybe were more goals than resolutions and Zarina didn't have a resolution, she had a motto. Um, 
and I was thinking about the resolutions that I've done in the past, like, you know, a few years ago, I had a year where I didn't buy any clothes, shoes or makeup, and that was, I loved it, I loved giving things up, uh, in the year after, I was going to try and make a new recipe every single uh, week of the year, and then in the first week of the year, I got COVID and got long COVID. I just was like, mm, not mind then. I think this year my resolution is to like film things. Long COVID and pots have made my memory like a piece of shit. And I don't know, like I take loads of pictures on my phone, but I like don't necessarily look through them again. 12,000. That's just stupid. What it might take is me filming things and taking the time to like edit things together so that I can reflect on my own memories and maybe some of that will become public. Maybe that's what we put on the white pube YouTube. But no, maybe my resolution is to just film everything. Like I've got loads of hard drives. <laughs> just put it on hard drives. And that feels like it'll be nicer to look back on as well. Especially if I can get it so that like it feels natural and you know people aren't like acting up to the camera. Like whatever the candid version is of filming. I just want to do that. Is that stalking? Do I just... <laughs> I'll figure it out. Anyway, enjoy the first thing that I filmed. Um, we're going to come back in March, we've decided. We figured out that we wrote 20,000 words over the past 16 days, um, which is <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> we wrote 10,000 words each. Um, so now it'll be a case of like editing that down and just keeping like the good shit. And then, you know, when we come back, we'll be in an even better place to edit. Before we came, I felt really nervous about the book. Like it was really just, weighing on me because I wanted it to be really good and real life was like really stressful and upsetting and oh, I don't know I don't feel nervous about the book anymore like that's what a residency has done I just want to do more of them now okay uh, thank you for watching um, potentially see you on the next one now that I'm a YouTuber bye Thank you.